Guys, welcome back to the Passing Money Plan. Uh, Kirby's going to be talking about his recent deal in Oklahoma. Yeah, uh, just a quick story. So um, I always, I have rules. I have rules when it comes to investing in real estate. Um, Y'all always hear me talk about multifamily this, multifamily that. I do have single family units. I am preferential to multifamilies because of the, you know, the whole adage when you have a single family that tenant moves out, then you're responsible for all the maintenance. I mean, you're maintenance you're always responsible for, but you're responsible for the mortgage payment and all that until you get another tenant in. And versus a multifamily, if one tenant moves out, you still have other units that can cover the debt obligations and things like that until you get another tenant in there. So I am, I prefer multifamily over single family, but sometimes there's some deals in the single family that I just can't pass up. So in this case, I got a, this was a deal in Oklahoma. Uh, I bought a single family uh, and I made a couple of errors. Uh, one of the errors I made was um, I didn't do enough due, dil due diligence on it. I, I already have multifamilies in the area. Renting it out was uh, particularly easy. Uh, but single families, and I was told by some people, boots on ground, because I live in Florida, this is Oklahoma, that single families are the way to go and you can get longer term tenants and you can get a premium on rent. I lean more heavily on what boots on ground said instead of me uh, doing a deeper dive into it. So anyway, I bought I bought the property. I got it at, you know, my breakneck prices. You know, me, I'm under underbidding i'm not paying this price and then even after i give an offer after i do the inspection due diligence and things like this i usually either get credit towards um closing get credit towards rate buy down or get uh credit towards you know repairs and things like that and in this deal i did all that great deal through and through if it's a long-term situation the only problem was was once I got the property and I got the property, got it up to par, got it up to snub, then no tenant showed up. Nobody came to rent it. So this now, well, at the time, that property has been the longest vacant property I've had. And um, the longest I ever went before this property was 22 days I've ever had a, a unit vacant. And this one, I was crossing the 30, 40, 30, 40 mark of days being vacant. I mean, of course, it wasn't hurting me because of the other units that I have that can cover it. But it was turning into, you know, like um, one renter at a time, you used to call them alligators. It was turned to an alligator quick. But um, the, the property management reached out to me. They told me how they felt about it. They feel like, uh, and this was boots on ground. Um, they told me how they felt that they 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 miss something or something like that, or they feel like, I think the words was, I feel like we failed you by giving you this, you know, telling you this the way that you should go and then it didn't work out. And then my only reply to him was two weeks from now, I mean, no, I didn't say two weeks from now. I said, in the future, we'll look back at this message that you just sent me and we'll laugh at it. That's the exact message I sent to the property manager. And then Lo and behold, and I said, and I told him, I said, I still got faith in you. Just keep doing the work, keep doing the due diligence. This was right when, this was right before school was about to let out. And my whole premise the whole time was you buy the property. And then when school is out in the Oklahoma area, then that's when the moving season will start. So I still haven't, I'm still in that premise. And then uh, you fast forward a week later, exactly seven days later, I get a call from that same property manager. And and then she asked me about, did I know anything about Airbnb arbitrage? And then I said, yes. And then I asked her, did she know anything about it? And she said, no, not really. And then so I said, OK, I need you to get me on the phone uh, with the person who want to do an Airbnb arbitrage, the investors and everything else. I'll start right there in case you got any questions. No, oh, keep going. Keep going. This is a good story. Keep going? Okay. Yeah. All right. So, so then, so, she, so she, uh, so this was the day prior. And then, so I'm, I'm hustling and bustling, going to get my kid from school because school's about to let out in 
Florida also, but still a couple more days. So I went to go get my uh, son from school and then the property manager called um, another female who's uh, Airbnb. I'm not going to blast their name out. And then an investor. They all, we all got on a four-way call. And then, you know, they asked me that I know anything about, you know, Airbnb arbitrage and all that stuff. And then I, I explained to him, yeah, I understood it. I'd never been in it, but I understood the process. And then we went through it. And then, you know, they came with their hardball deal, like they should. Investor talked to investor, hardball deal, this standard across the board. And then it was, they asked to rent it for $200 less than what I had it listed for. $200 less than what I had it listed for. And they said they'll pay me six months in advance. And then I just said the numbers don't work for me with the way that, the way that works out. And then, um, and then we spitball back and forth for a couple of different ideas. And then I came back with, um, how about you pay a hundred dollars less than what I'm asking. And then you give me back in profits from the Airbnb that you're running. The phone went completely silent. I mean, me, I was going for the Hail Mary. I'm not going to lie. I'm going for the Hail Mary. And then, uh, so the phone goes completely silent for a minute. And then I hear a gentleman get, I mean, on the phone. And then he said, he preferred with his partner, the one that wanted to do the Airbnb arbitrage. And then they talked for a second, you know, just spitballing amongst himself. I don't know if they was texting in the background. Cause again, we're on a four way, you know, just a call. It ain't no like video chat or something like that. And then, um, she asked him like, what do you think? And then she, and then the guy said, his exact words was, this guy seems knowledgeable. He's uh, no, he's asking the question that you should ask. And he said, I'm willing to go in the deal with him. So how it all turned out was I received all the rent up front, six months rent up front. Then with the six months rent up front, they Airbnb the property. They Airbnb the property. And then... Uh, I get a percentage of the profits from the Airbnb also, or excuse me, a percentage of the revenue from the Airbnb also every uh, every three months on a quarterly basis. So what question you got? Gosh. Well, I was going to, so I was going to ask that, but you just answered it was, is it of the percentage of the profits or the revenue? Yeah, this is a, this is a great story. Reminded me of Kevin O'Leary is what I compared you to, but, um, how is it going now? Because I meant to ask you uh, last night, actually, um, but I figured, you know, maybe we could just wait. So how is how is that going? Because I know you closed this deal what, about a month ago with them. Well, the, yeah, the, the thing was we closed the deal. It really it seemed like a month ago. Right. But no, it's only been about. Three weeks, really three weeks. So okay. this is the first week. I mean, well, this is actually you know, we in June, you know, yeah. so they prorated pay for May and then six months after that. So I think it expires in October, November. Um, so it's it's going, I mean, I have all the money. So let's just say if this was a 100% renter, then I already got six months of rent already. Right. I already have that in my bank account. That was, that was a deal. That was part of the stipulations from the jump six months in advance. So I already have that money. And then now the second part of the Airbnb portion of it, I'm not I'm not involved in the Airbnb process at all. I'm not sitting there asking, hey, did you get any Airbnb people today? Because it don't matter. Right. They paid me what I wanted. And then so fast forward every two months. So we're looking June, July. So at the end of July, we have a third party uh, accountant auditor send me all the Airbnb numbers. Okay. They send me the Airbnb numbers, and then I get my percentage of the revenue based off of a third-party audit of the Airbnb numbers, and then we just go like that. But I already have the rent that I uh, want uh, from the six months already, and then so all the Airbnb, that's just on top of what I was getting for the rent. Okay. Yeah, because that was my question was, how is the Air Airbnb going? So so they, they will update you every two months? So three times, right. six month period. Yeah. So 
Right. So that yeah, I'll get I'll get it updated every time. And it, and it was all part of the contract. Everything was written in the contract. So it wasn't just a, a regular standard lease to say, hey, yeah, you rent my property, you're allowed to rent it out. It states in the in the lease and in the contract that yeah, you can sublease it. Yeah, I uh my percentage of and the percentage, I'm not gonna even talk about the percentage, but yes, I received a percentage of this by a third party auditor that has the auditor the uh, audit. Uh, account's name on there and all that other jargon that goes into the contract. But and the, and the, the reason why I thought of this, because, you know, I look on, you know, social media and I hear people about, oh, do Airbnb arbitrage, meet a, a landlord that will let you uh, rent out their property or sublease their, your, their property, um, but they're receiving their rent, so they shouldn't care. And and wait, that's that's another part I wanted to bring up. So so with me doing this Airbnb arbitrage, well, with this investor, I'm not responsible for any maintenance. So right. I'm not plumber, you know, the, the things that happen, you know, the small time things that happen, you know, during a rental process, I don't have to deal with it. The investor, they take on all of that. The only thing I'm responsible for is something catastrophic, a tornado or the roof, you know, damage or something like that, that my insurance would cover, a big ticket item like that. That's the only thing I'm responsible for, but to talking to tenants and dealing with tenants on a day to day or fixing leaky pipes, running toilets, none of that stuff is none of that stuff is in my uh, purview. The Airbnb arbitrage person is responsible for all that. So that's a you know maintenance suspense that I don't have. I do save for it, but I don't have to deal with it. But going back to the other thing that I was saying was, so I was, I, I see all on social media all the time that, you know, people talk about, oh, this is how you can get it to Airbnb without owning a property. And then, so I always heard it and it's, you know, good concept, you know, you rent out, you get a long-term lease on somebody's unit and then you Airbnb it out. And then you just responsible for all the maintenance for the person that's doing the Airbnb arbitrage. So I always thought of that. So I always knew the process of how it worked. You know, I've heard, saw many videos, looked at, uh, did research on it all the time. And then so when me coming back with the, you know, percentage of the Airbnb, that was just me thinking around like, okay, I see how this benefits the the uh, person doing an Airbnb arbitrage, but how can the owner get, you know, a percent, a little extra kick in from that money? And then that's why I threw that shot in the dark when we just had that phone conversation and so far, I mean, like I said, I already have my money up front. So the worst thing that could happen, so I know people looking at the worst thing that could happen. I already have my money up front for the six months. So the worst thing that could happen is the place don't Airbnb for six months. Right. I still receive my money. Uh, the other thing is, I mean, we do have a contract. Could the person be shady and not, you know, not meet their obligation? Yeah, that's a possibility, but this person has done, because uh, I did my research, this person has done this process uh, in the town or, or you know, in that state already 10, 11 other times. So they already have 10 or 11 other ones going. So it's not like they're hard to find. So it's, you know, a little risk gamble on my side as far as, you know, ensuring I receive the money on the back end, but on the front end of, you know, having the rents and things like that, I'm already covered. All right. I have one last question. Um, if you were able to, like from a number standpoint, if you were able to do this with every one of your units, would you? So, all right, in a perfect world, in a perfect world and everything and everybody's good, everybody's going to meet the obligation, everybody's right. going to do that. What I do with every unit that's a good question. That's that's a good question. Um, I mean, because it takes off so much obligation. So right. you know how we when we write in deals, you know, we already account for you know five, ten, fifteen percent for maintenance and vacancy obligation and all of that. I mean, I still account for it now. Just in case you know something goes awry, right, right? Of course. But that's a that's a lot of percentage you get to put back in your pocket. Yeah, that's a big percentage you get to put in your pocket. I mean, in all my locations, you know, Airbnb friendly, meaning that it's 
you know, close to a resort, close to, you know, the things that, you know, people want to do. No, I don't. But if they were, I mean, that is, and I'm receiving the money up front. Hmm. That's, that's something I, I would, I would consider. And then for anybody that's wondering, the, the reason why the person went for this one, the house, the house that I bought is literally two blocks away from a university, two blocks away from a university. So, so I know you might be saying, oh, they're going to tear it down. Yeah, it might. But this, like I said, this was a risk that I took to see how this thing works out. If I mean, if it works out good, I'll continue to, I'll continue to go down that route. Right. But I mean, I have enough units to say that if it, if it don't, then I'll still be covered. And then worst come to worst, I got, I mean, if the worst case scenario happened, the person is full of it and they let the tenants tear up the place and then they give it back to me. And then let's say go through litigation and nothing happens. That's the worst case scenario. Then I just rehabbed and then ran it out. But I think, I think even if I didn't get the Airbnb situation, I think it would have still rented it out. It was just that that time was right in the tween time of people getting out of, I mean, kids getting out of school and the, the buying season was just starting. And it just so happened this opportunity came first before the uh, the moving season started. So that's, but I went with it because it was just something new, intriguing that I just want to see how it worked out. Okay. So that means, hey guys, if you like this video, hit the like button. If you got any questions for Kirby, uh, just leave a comment down below, share this video, subscribe, and we'll see you guys in the next one.